all the government employees were asked to donate one day of their salary to this PM case. So a lot of money had gone. And then of course a lot of firms and individuals, everybody had uh, donated. But now they say nothing to do with the government. And you, you can't even ask questions about it. It doesn't come under RTI. It doesn't come under RTI. So nobody knows like we did not know about the electoral bonds till the court had said because I mean, whatever the prime minister might say to you know ANI or before that Tandi TV whatever he might say because much before ANI he, he said something to Tandi TV he said two things which uh, Andram also had referred I, I would like to share a few thoughts on that you know he said people who are opposed to electoral bonds will come to regret it soon that's what he said. Normally, somebody like us, we are used to political leaders saying, whenever court said something, the first reaction of any political leader, political party, MP, Prime Minister, Minister, anybody would say, we respect the court. But did, did you hear that? Did you hear that from this Prime Minister or anybody in the government? No. You all know that Agriculture is the biggest sector in our economy, indirectly or directly impacting the economic lives of most of the people in the country. And even geographically, that is the sector which dominates the largest political geography of India. Three legislations were passed in Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, of course, in Parliament not even five minutes of discussion took place not even five minutes and there were protests again there are protests but we don't talk about the present protests those days protests and the prot when the protests were going on the protesters were called all sorts of names do you remember any any of those andolan gv tukde tukde gang anti-india urban naxals Khalistanis, you know, all sorts of things. You know, people who did not want those legislations to be implemented, they were all those. Andolan Jeevis, Narban Naxals, and Tukde Tukde Gang, Anti-India, Khalistani, and all that. And a few days before the Punjab Assembly elections, the Prime Minister decided to withdraw them. I don't know whether he falls into any of these. Obviously not. Then, when they when parliament was in session they were withdrawn not even five minutes of discussion when they were passed not even five minutes of discussion when they were withdrawn not even five minutes of discussion if democracy means only going to the polling booth once in five years and casting your vote and coming out that is no democracy Democracy, as we understand, people like you and me, is a form of governance by conversation, by discussion, by dissent, by disagreement, by persuasion, by convincing people. This is a continuous process. It's a dialogue. So there is no dialogue. There is only monkey bath. You know, Jaggery, I paid 42 rupees in December. Beginning of this month, I paid 52 rupees. It's gone up. Sugar, I paid 34 rupees in December. I paid 45 rupees beginning of this month. Ginger, you don't eat? <laughs> and I'll give you five kilos of rice and shut you up. But, but I will give five airports to my friend. This regime I will fight. You know, the, the entire ideological architecture is this. Inequality is good because people who earn a lot of money, they're good people. Why are you not smiling? They're good people. Let them earn money so that they will invest and give you some jobs. Tomorrow, day after, after one year, they'll, you get something out of it. So, 
inequality is not bad after all inequality is good how will they give you jobs and how will they invest if they don't earn money ha huh. pangaria also says one more thing ram he says okay there would be some excesses here and there they might celebrate some pre wedding don't don't worry about it it's okay our air force will take care of all the foreign guests and you know when they come in private jets and all that will take care we take care because they are good people they invest but my my worry is they are not investing as i told you they are not investing they are not investing if they are even if they are given all these incentives they are not investing this has a a political counterpart i want you to understand this especially in this season is this enak tamil theriyadu puriyum pesa varadu neenga pesina puriyum naan pesina ungale puriyadu manikalam therefore i would like to speak in english i'll try to be as simple as possible but in case there's any difficulty i think paneer sanwal sir will uh, summarize they were very generous and they said i could speak for about an hour or so but i said i would like to have a q and a question answers also some discussion so i would limit it to about 40 minutes or so and then we probably we can have 15 to 20 minutes of uh, q and a the reason why i said that we should have a, a q and a is that i am not very fond of monkey bath <laughs> i would like to have some kind of a dialogue also recently somebody asked me that's when i went to the gokul institute in pune somebody asked me parakala don't you see anything good that's happening in the country why are you always critical he was he didn't say it but he meant what's wrong with you <laughs> he didn't say it but you know the I, you can get get the tone i said look it's like this i go to a doctor and the doctor says look prabhakar you have a there's a, some problem with your heart now i come out shouting you know uh, stamping my feet and say what kind of a doctor is he my eyes are good my ears are good my hands are good my feet are all right my teeth are all right he's just saying you know your heart has a problem what is this so my situation is very similar i go to the heart of the problem <laughs> and and for praising your eyes are good your ears are good your nose is wonderful your teeth are there are people there are people there are channels there are newspapers and there are agencies who are interviewing the prime minister which sri ram uh, n ram referred recently just now so you have that role is taken so what is left for me and n ram is to look what is going wrong before i go into the details of what i am trying to say today i want to tell you that i am not going to say anything at all that is not already known to you you know everything that i am going to say 
what i am going to do is to bring them all together juxtapose them put them in a context and try to tell you what they mean for india this is what i am going to do today there are three things recently that has come out from the regime the so called mandarins of the regime or the thinkers of the regime it has come immediately after close on the heels of a report by the world inequality lab which was run by thomas piketty in paris very renowned economist especially in uh, the domain of uh, equality and inequality historically in all the societies they have studied india and they said this team that inequality in india is at a historical high not even during the british colonial rule we had such severe inequality to give you an idea of what that is 1% of indians today corner 22% of the national income 1% corners 22% of the national income and 1% owns about 44% of the assets this is the finding of world inequality lab and this inequality has intensified has become very sharp over the last 10 years this is the finding of the world inequality lab i want to put this against the context of what very important people have said from among the regime one is by somebody called professor arvind pandariya most of you must have heard his name he was the founding vice chairman of niti aayog and today he is the chairman of the finance commission he wrote immediately i think just in, in about 2 3 days after the world inequality labs report had come out he said he wrote a piece for the times of india he said don't lose sleep over inequality he said he doesn't how lucky and a few months before that when the ilo international labor office had released the employment unemployment situation in india the chief economic advisor ca had said addressing problems like unemployment is not the responsibility of the government because that report had said you must be aware you must have seen the reports that report had said that of the unemployed people more than 62% are educated youngsters 
this is the ILO's report. But if you want to get some kind of a data on what is the unemployment situation, I'll, I'll go into that uh, a little, little, little data. And this is the second. One is Professor Pangaria, the other one is uh, Anand Nageshwara. The third one is somebody who is a member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. He said, supposed to be a very bright person, he said, you know, there is poverty of aspiration in India. Poverty of aspiration, not opportunities. And he also elaborated it. What are our youngsters doing? What do they want to become? They want to become intellectuals? What nonsense. They want to become somebody like Mrinal Sen. And they don't want to become somebody like Bill Gates. They don't, they don't have the aspiration to become Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg. They don't have this kind of an ambition. What kind of a people these are? This is the, the third person. I just want you to park these three ideas in your mind so that you know whatever I'm going to say we can later on put them in context and when the world inequality lab report came even today I think even yesterday also some people have been they've been writing there are two types of people who are writing one of course the the most important is prof what professor pangari had written that don't worry don't don't lose sleep over inequality the other is look there is no inequality you're getting it wrong there is absolutely no choice between these two but if i am forced to choose if somebody puts a, a gun to my temple and say choose between these two I would rather choose somebody who would say there is no inequality because you know they still feel that equality is a value instead of saying it's good to have inequality that's what professor Panigari was saying I'll come to that later and professor Panigari says it's good to have inequality. Let's have inequality. Okay, that is. So if you have to choose between those two, at least, you know, people who are saying there is no inequality, they still somewhere in their back of their minds, they still value equality. Anyway, not much of a choice, but if at all, you have to force me. You have to, I have to, for, I'm, if I'm forced to choose between these two. Just park these three ideas in mind. You know, uh, sometime in 22, beginning of 22, 2022, there was a, an advertisement by the Indian Railways for some jobs. They are called non-technical professional categories, NTPC jobs. They are nothing but, you know, uh, washing, cleaning, putting the chair here, moving it there, manual jobs. But instead of calling them manual jobs, you call them slightly, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a euphemistic way, they, you call them non-technical professional categories. So you, you feel nice about it. If you ask them, what are you doing? I am a non-technical professional guy. You can say that, isn't it? Instead of saying that, you know, I, I just move the furniture or clean or wash, things like that, it, it makes you feel good. 
whatever it is the number of jobs that were advertised were 35000 35000 the number of applicants were 1 crore 25 lakhs did you hear me properly 35000 jobs were advertised and 1 crore 25 lakh applicants for these 35000 jobs you know what is happening in gaza and the israeli government had sacked all the palestinians who are working in gaza area under the government so they wanted to recruit people to fill those positions from different countries and you know our prime minister and israeli prime minister are very good friends they we do not know but they might say anada da poda that kind of a, that kind of a close friendship they have so they wanted to recruit people from here so they chose uttar pradesh haryana to start with and later on after the last assembly elections they've expanded that to madhya pradesh and Rajasthan also and lots of youngsters were queuing up they were queuing up and some media people have gone to them and said look do you know that you're going to Gaza of course we know are you aware that there is a huge conflict going on there yes of course we are aware do you know that you might die because bombs are raining there and you know uh, the shots fire is a war they said of course we know then why are you going you know what the youngsters said instead of dying here without a job <laughs> let us let, let us go there as long as we live we'll get some money, we can send some money back home and we can get on with our lives. And if you're lucky, we'll come back. Otherwise, it's okay. And one day, recently, I come from Hyderabad. We in Hyderabad woke up to see a news report and we were shocked that was a youngster's dead body had come back from Ukraine Ukraine till then we did not know nobody knew in the in the country probably I do not know at least no not anybody whom I knew knew about this that lots of youngsters were recruited from India to go to Ukraine to aid the Russian war, war effort. Are you aware? We are not aware. Most of us not aware, are not aware. So we got to know about this because the dead body had come back from Ukraine to Hyderabad. The point I am making is that people are willing to go to Gaza willing to go to Ukraine and lakhs of people crore more than a crore of people have applied for 35,000 jobs this is the serious unemployment problem today in India you know youth unemployment in the world India's youth unemployment is one of the highest 24% you know we are in the company of Iran Yemen Syria economies and countries like that 
Lebanon. They are in the range of 24, 25, 26. You know, I am not trying to compare India with Japan, 6%, 8% or UK. I am not, com not trying to compare. I am not that over ambitious. You know, our neighbor, a small neighbor like Bangladesh, their youth unemployment is 12%. Twenty-four percent youth unemployment is the headline rate, but if you want to break it down, the youth unemployment rate among twenty and twenty-five age group is forty percent. So overall, youth unemployment is about twenty-four percent today in India, and the recent ILO report about which the CEHC had said, you know, it's, it's not uh, uh, the government's job to look into these problems. The ILO report had said, of the entire unemployed people, about 60 to 65 percent are educated youth, educated unemployed, that's what. And I do not know, Hindu carried a good report on uh, what the CEC had said. CEC had even talked about, you know, there was there was a Cho Ramaswamy movie also, and of course it is Anandrarayanan who said I I do not know. Of course we all we also had a similar because those days in sixties and seventies lots of Telugu movies were also you know, made in Tamil and Tamil movies were also made into Telugu movies. So it, he also drew a parallel from that movie. I do not know what to whom he is referring. Yeah, Mahmud bin Tughlaq. You know, he, he he said that. You know, people, they go on uh, making some kind of a promises. I do not know whether he meant two crore jobs or not. I do not know. <laughs> I have no idea. But this is, this is the CEA who was saying about this. This is the employment, unemployment situation. Sometime back, I think in, it's in the month of February, the government had given us a white paper on the economy. You must have all seen that. Somebody asked me, Prabhakar, what do you think of the white paper the government had given on the economy? I said, look, I never waited for the government to come out with a white paper because I get a white paper on the economy whenever I go to buy vegetables and whenever I go and buy my groceries, I do it myself. So I get a direct, wonderful, sparkling white paper on the economy once a week and once a month. Once a week when I go and buy my vegetables and once in a month when I go and buy my groceries. I am sure all of you are also getting a white paper, similar white paper, which is which is a stark reality, isn't it? There's no point in you know looking at the tables and uh, you know graphs and colorful things, but you know this is you pay hard cash and get things. And when I look at these things. I don't compare under Jawaharlal Nehru and under who you know. No. I am trying to compare what I paid for in November or December 23 and what I paid just about in the first week. I will give you a, a, a little, a small example of it. You, you think about this. You know, I paid 110 rupees for my dal in November, Srinivasgar. This month beginning, I paid 170. Yesterday when I said to somebody that, you know, it is 170, he said, no, 230. And he sent me a picture. But then, but then that was in a uh, air-conditioned mall, you know, uh, 
but i buy it in a normal thing so you know or maybe it has increased i do not know i don't know how much do you pay here and if it's cheaper let me know after the meeting is over tomorrow I'll, <laughs> tomorrow i'll pick it up before going you know jaggery i paid 42 rupees in december beginning of this month i paid 52 rupees it's gone up sugar i paid 34 rupees in december i paid 45 rupees beginning of this month ginger you don't eat December I paid 95 rupees recently I paid 120 rupees I sympathize with you <laughs> green chilies we ate a lot I paid 65 earlier in December 83 rupees last week You know, I'm not talking about the uh, what the economists call WPI, uh, wholesale price index, and CPI, not the Communist Party of India, consumer price index. I'm not talking about those things. But, you know, this is my lived experience. You know, when they say in journalism schools, they say, if you want to know the weather, don't Google it. Just open the curtain, <laughs> look through the window. So I don't have to wait for the government to tell me. But, but if at all, if you want to you know, look at these things, don't trust the government much. Because government, especially this government, this government you know uh, I follow the election campaigns very closely I followed the Karnataka campaigns also in Karnataka campaign the Prime Minister had said repeatedly in many rallies he said these opposition people abused me 99 times not 100 times not 98 times a lot of precision you must appreciate that but if you ask the government and the prime minister how many people died during covid no idea How many ventilators were there available to the people? No idea. How many migrant labor walked from Kerala to Bihar and UP and Punjab to Bihar and UP? They have no idea. But it's not that they are not capable of keeping a count. They do. They are very efficient. You see, otherwise how will you, how will you arrive at 99? that is the precision with which they can if they want so the government doesn't give you much data but there are there are now fortunately there are agencies like cmie and other people who they, they give data now if you look at these they give you what is the because you see if you if you just look at inflation the figure you you tend to get misled and there are so many economists here i think mankatesh is here you you understand these things i don't want to be technical but you know uh, a bit of technicality also is, is important in this context
one day i was reading a, a newspaper and then it said the headline said inflation lowest in the last four quarters lowest i said oh my god i should rush to the bazaar now and get something but then you know because i had a lot of time on hand so i i read what exactly it is it it seems sir it seems it had fallen from 6.9% to 6.8% lowest technically yes lowest <laughs> but nothing to really you know celebrate about so not that kind of a massaged figures but the actual figures are vegetable inflation is about 27% pulses 19.5% cereals 7.8% spices 16.4% milk inflation 4.6% eggs inflation 5.6% sugar inflation 7.5% if you want technical data so this is the price situation we have dealt with employment situation now there is price situation and the household debt today stands at a historical high of 40% 40% of household debt household savings is at a historical low of 5% it 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 follows actually i don't have to say this because in so much of unemployment so much of price rise how will you save any money that is the you know unimaginable distress do you know what happened last financial year last fiscal the total amount of money that was allocated to manrega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantees act under that you know minimum wages the entire budget allocation ram was exhausted in 6 months a one year allocation was exhausted in 6 months that is the kind of distress no doubling of farm farm income but a huge influx of people back to villages from the urban areas because there are no jobs this is the household income and household savings and household debt what is the national debt national debt in india the government figure which they revealed they used to reveal once in a while some some data now and then but they stopped now they don't um, they gave us some data some time ago they said it was around 160 lakh crores that was 23 2023 now it has probably gone to you know uh, 170 or 75 some people say but i don't want to be responsible i want to strictly go by the book what the government itself had said at that time in 23 was about 160 lakh crores that was the national debt now you know that was that is the national debt in addition to you know continuous raiding of the reserve bank of india and its reserves it the reserve bank of india's reserves have now fallen to 35000 crores are you aware most of you are aware i think 
and that again in addition to the 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 the, the kind of uh, selling of the public assets so they get money from selling the public assets cheaply and they raid the reserve bank of india and they also borrow with all this the national debt situation is at a crisis point domestic investment has been falling domestic investment has been falling somebody said acche din in spite of acche din you know you don't get that kind of a picture when you know prime minister addresses a meeting of the industrialists because they one of them stands up and says you know that it's it's a wonderful um investment atmosphere and and things like that but the proof of the pudding is if if the investment climate is good are you investing if they are not investing you know for them to invest the government you must you must really appreciate the government it is doing its best they are doing three, three or four things one repeatedly they hold meetings and they urge the industry please invest they are they are requesting so you can't find fault with the government you can't say you have not requested that is why we are not investing no so they are they are requesting repeatedly they are requesting and they have also tried to give the industrialists and investors a lot of incentives they have brought the corporate tax down from 30% to 22% so you can't say look taxes are high how can we invest no that also they have taken care they have done one more thing that is the production linked incentives pli what, what more do you want ah maybe you have a lot of debt ah that is why probably you are not investing so therefore the government has decided that they would write off 25 lakh crore of corporate debt debt is written off corporate taxes are lowered production linked in incentives are given on top of it prime minister and everybody is saying please invest they are requesting also till the domestic investment has fallen from 30% to 19% so bad what more can the government do ram there is one more that is you know again this is this is now come to the knowledge of people like us after the electoral bonds thing we all thought government is doing a lot of things giving production linked incentives but now we get to know that for production linked investment production linked in incentives there's an electoral bond quid pro quo you know our arbindo pharma ram which is very famous in uh, delhi liquor scam and bail and approver and all that they have because you see the government of india had they wanted to give a lot of incentives to pharma companies so that you know we are the pharma of the world and in in order to encourage them Arubindo Pharma was granted a thousand crore PLI over the next five years, 
and some money was given in the beginning first year and some electoral bonds were also given so electoral bonds are not just for getting a contract and getting a bail they are also for pli production linked in incentives also are linked to the electoral bonds so you have a lot of uh, uh, constriction of savings no investment and the atmosphere is such that a lot of people are giving up indian citizenship relinquishing indian citizenship surrendering their passports and going away here again we have data up to 2022 given by the government in 2014 the number of people who relinquished indian citizenship giving up passports was 129000 15 131000 last figure that was available was for 22 after that we don't have data it is 225000 people they are not just sir they are not just going to study or work or you know stay there or holiday no they are saying you know take it away i don't want and going away i'll tell you something interesting you like this this is in an answer to a question raised in the rajya sabha in december 2023 question number if somebody wants to you know hold me up tomorrow look you, you just said something and you, you don't you have the evidence the question number 553 in rajya sabha the government said according to the you know normally you know trump wanted to build a wall to prevent illegal immigration into the united states you know you know all that isn't it generally a lot of south americans go into the united states but that is no more the trend that's old trend it is indians who are at the top now in that answer they are quoting the us immigration services data 96917 illegal indian immigrants or uh, illegally indian started tried to cross over into the united states they were held that is we do not know how many were not held and who went in we do not know but people who were held officially stopped war 90 96000 somebody was talking to somebody was talking saying about uh, gujarat now you must know from vibrant gujarat 23000 of them from vibrant gujarat you can't say normal gujarat so this is i mean i have taken too much uh, time on uh, the economy and economic crisis and all that uh, let me go to i mean ram referred uh, n ram referred uh, uh, to you know uh, uh, abrogation of uh, 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 writing down of uh, article 370 and all that he talked about the democratic situation let me uh, give you an idea of what happened when it came to passing laws legislations you all know that 
agriculture is the biggest sector in our economy indirectly or directly impacting the economic lives of most of the people in the country and even geographically that is the sector which dominates the largest political geography of india three legislations were passed in lok sabha and rajya sabha of course in parliament not even 5 minutes of discussion took place not even 5 minutes and there were protests again there are protests but we don't talk about the present protests those days protests and the prot when the protests were going on the protesters were called all sorts of names do you remember any any of those andolan gv tukde tukde gang anti india urban naxals khalistanis you know all sorts of things you know people who did not want those legislations to be implemented they were all those andolan gv is urban naxals and tukde tukde gang anti india khalistan and all that and a few days before the punjab assembly elections the prime minister decided to withdraw them i don't know whether he falls into any of these <laughs> obviously not then when the when parliament was in session they were withdrawn not even 5 minutes of discussion when they were passed not even 5 minutes of discussion when they were withdrawn not even 5 minutes of discussion so if democracy means only going to the polling booth once in 5 years and casting your vote and coming out that is no democracy democracy as we understand people like you and me is a form of governance by conversation by discussion by dissent by disagreement by persuasion by convincing people this is a continuous process it's a dialogue so there is no dialogue there is only man ki baat so this is the kind of uh, uh, quality that we have come to let's stop me when i when i'll give you two more uh, uh, then of course i i conclude and we can have some kind of a discussion you know bharatiya janata party which is now the the ruling party if you go to ever if you ever you go to their website they tell you that they are the world's biggest political party the, not only india's biggest political party but world's biggest political party the world's biggest political party has no place for india's biggest minority i'll tell you how this is the first ever time in india's political history that the largest minority of india that is the muslim has no rep representation in the cabinet or the council of ministers in the union and the largest state in india uttar pradesh which also has the largest number of muslim minorities muslim minority does not have a single member in the bjp's legislature party in gujarat also there is not a single member in the legislature party in karnataka also there is not a single member in the legislature party 
you might feel that you know there is no just there is no member but not even a single person was even given a ticket for the assembly elections in uttar pradesh gujarat and karnataka so it is a complete rejection of the largest minority in this country so it gives you a foretaste of what is going to come if this government if this party returns to power i want you to pay attention to this you know there was uh, some time ago there was this g20 summit in india remember you know ram i tell you i don't i didn't know what g20 was at that time but i i kept seeing g20 g20 everywhere yeah i go to the airport there is g20 go to the petrol station there is g20 on the road there is a g20 on the phone there is a g20 on television there is g20 newspaper there is g20 everywhere there is g20 i'll give you what my impression was quietly you compare your impression in your mind you don't have to tell me just just compare i'll tell you what my impression was i thought when i saw this kind of a huge talk about g20 i got the following impression i thought all the leaders of different countries china usa russia uk germany france japan brazil you know so many countries they all got together and said look you know what do we do we are just at a loss so many problems are the climate change you know war here war there what do we do they confused then somebody said don't worry we go to vishnu guru oh my god and vishnu guru will so they all came not only just i mean this is my impression not only they just came they came they prostrated and said look see rescue us so all these problems then we said don't worry you know we had uh, uh, organized some dance uh, you know good good food and meetings and all that kind of a thing and they all hugged each other you know there were a lot of bon homi and, and they went away with a lot of solutions and all that. that's the impression that i had i don't know about you but after that after after my excitement calmed down a bit then i googled then i, I then i came to know you know this g20 was held last year in indonesia this year now here and it's already gone to brazil and after that it'll go to somewhere else you know this it seems is a routine thing i didn't know and we had we had what is called a good catchy slogan what is it you don't remember vasudhaiv kutumbakam vasudhaiv kutumbakam vasudhai you know what is vasudhaiv kutumbakam vasudhaiv kutumbakam is the entire earth is one family then somebody asked me Oh, if the entire Earth is one family, Manipur is not a part of it. <laughs> Manipur is not. And what about those people who eat that? What about those people who speak that language? They are not part of it. What about those people who wear that? But. was they were going to not manipur not people who eat this not people who wear that not people who speak this language but entire earth is one family this is the you know what happens is that sanskrit of course is a good language wonderful language you know it is good to learn but don't be fooled by thinking anything which is in sanskrit is wonderful <laughs> 
No. And anything which is written in Sanskrit is also not ancient. Not necessary. You can you can cook up something now. It will sound as though it is ancient, but it is not. Like for instance, I tried to see what is this Vasudeva Kutumbakam, and it turned out it is from a much much later Upanishad called Maha Upanishad. It's nothing to do with those you know uh, ten Upanishads on which our Adi Shankara had written commentaries and all that. It is nothing to do with uh, Isha Vasham, Kena, Katha, Prashna, Munda, Mandu, Ketai. No, nothing to do with all those. It is a very minor kind of an Upanishad called Maho Upanishad. And you must also know what exactly is the text of it. Then you will know. Why are in, in, in our in our the constitution makers have you know uh, taken that and whether these people understand it or not. Ram it just says this I am Nijaha Paro Veti Ganana Laguchetha Sam. Udara Chiritanam to Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. It simply means don't 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 get uh, you know confused. It's nothing. It's is this small, very normal kind of a thing. It is an assertion of it's a description. It's not an assertion of a creed. It's just a description. It only describes people who reckon him as mine and him as not mine. Are of small minds, Lagushetasa. Those people who think the entire earth is one family are broad minded. Now you know who is who's who is it that description for. But these people don't know. They think it's it's great thing and you know, they fooled us. You know, let's go back to equality, inequality. Because we started there with our three big gurus. You know, I would rather support somebody who fights against inequality but fails may not succeed rather than those people who say that inequality is good I will fight them and I think today our duty is to fight those people who think inequality is good I think the duty is to fight those people who would say Look, take these five kilos of rice, you're a poor fellow. And I'll give you five kilos of rice and shut you up. But but I will give five airports to my friend. This regime I will fight. You know, the, the entire ideological architecture is this. That what Panagariya says and all these people say is, you know, inequality is good because people who earn a lot of money, they are good people. Why are you not smiling? They are good people. Let them earn money so that they will invest and give you some jobs. Tomorrow, day after, after one year, they'll, you get something out of it. So inequality is not bad. After all, inequality is good. How will they give you jobs and how will they invest if they don't earn money? Ah. Pangaria also says one more thing, Ram. He says, okay, there would be some excesses here and there. They might celebrate some pre-wedding. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. Our Air Force will take care of all the foreign guests and you know, when they come in private jets and all that, we'll take care. We take care because they're good people, they invest. 
but my my worry is they're not investing as i told you they're not investing they're not investing if they are even if they are given all these incentives they're not investing this has a a political counterpart i want you to understand this especially in this season is this people who earn a lot of money inequality is good because you know you will also be taken care politically what it translates to is hindus are good after all have they invaded anybody no they're good people you accept them and live they'll take care of you the only thing is you have to agree to be second class now we do not know what will happen tomorrow so you know on the one hand the the economic architecture is this inequality on the other hand the political architecture is this inequality religious inequality economic inequality social inequality economic inequality this is the not vishwaguru but the vishwarupam of the present regime's ideological architecture and they will bring in so many things let let me not elaborate i think i have run out of my time so i'll i'll end here but having come all the way vijay ji had called me ravi had called me um, sorry, ram had called me you know i i am trying to avoid <laughs> ram so <laughs> <laughs> so let me not go away without frankly brutally sharing my apprehension if we don't take care now what you see in manipur will happen in every state <laughs> generally north east is not a major part of our political imagination therefore we don't bother it's almost more than one year now it's been burning every day it is burning but our newspapers don't talk about it our televisions don't talk about it and our leaders don't talk about it the government doesn't talk about it the prime minister has not found time to go there even he goes everywhere but this is the reality so that kind of a thing can happen in every state and not just it can take care it will happen don't ever think that ah somewhere is happening it's not us no don't do, don't do that please don't do that one more thing is you know you hear a lot of calls people say dog whistles no more dog whistles actually open calls from fringe elements so called fringe elements economic boycott lynching marking of houses call for arms and all that and very funny slogans somebody who knows good hindi here jab mulla kaate jayenge jai shri ram chillayenge the such kind of you know slogans on the roads of delhi the capital now nobody responsible in the government or in the ruling party says anything about these things nobody condemns them they are quiet which means they are endorsing it now these are all fringe elements so called fringe elements but if this government comes back vijay ji such calls you will hear from the ramparts of red fort and before i shut up let me say this whatever i have said today i have said with utmost responsibility one i did not say anything with pleasure i said it all with 
pain but these are real dangers kindly don't brush it aside i think you know nothing will happen somebody was telling me the other day i was in guntur a very senior uh, politician who was a member of rajya sabha and all that he said prabhak indian people you know they know what to do don't worry i said sir were you in jail during that time yes you were in jail that time that is why indian people resisted dictatorship and ram was saying about it isn't it so today don't be complacent that you know things will be taken care no we have to make it happen there is nothing inevitable you have to act it is the political agency it is the human agency which will stop this kind of a brutality which this kind of a dictatorship and majoritarian rule that we see today please stop this you have to take action and you have to make this happen don't ever be under the impression that everybody is taking care no you have to take care of this thank you very much i am mani vannan uh, sir said he can understand tamil oh, can i ask in tamil sir okay a uh, kekala இப்ப சமீபத்தில் இந்த தேர்தல் நேரத்தில் சிறு சிறு குறும் படங்கள் வந்து நம்மளுடைய கைபேசியில் வருது இந்த குறும் படங்களில் திரு மோடியை மிக பிரபலமான தலைவர்களாக மேலை நாட்டு தலைவர்கள் அங்கீகரிக்கிறது மாதிரியான படங்கள் வருது இது எப்படி சாத்தியமாகிறது அத்தனை பேருக்கும் அறிவு சார்ந்த பொருளாதார நிபுணத்துவம் சார்ந்த இத்தனை தலைவர்களும் திரு மோடியை மிகச்சிறந்த தலைவராக காட்டக்கூடிய ஒரு வாய்ப்பை இவர்கள் சிறு சிறு குறும்படங்களின் மூலமாக வெளியிடுகிறார்கள் நம்முடைய பொருளாதாரத்தில் நீங்கள் சொன்னது மாதிரி எவ்ரி டே we are suffering out of price rise communal problem insecular atmosphere what not everything he did whatever possible to disturb us to disturb our routine but we are seeing small clippings posing mr pond modi as as a biggest leader how this is possible just i want to know i am little confused sir good evening sir thank you very much for your nice speech and uh, advices the question is the last 2 years i have been watching public politics and uh, development in all over india i am from indian democratic redemption movement the question is how to narrate to the common public about this modi government i have been watching hindu all the paper tv so many but no one able to exactly narrate to the common public i don't know how to narrate to the poor people common people middle class people about this simple word when he came 2014 he said acha din like that simple word he came now we couldn't able to narrate properly even political parties are failed to narrate even big big stalwarts are there simple way how to narrate to the common public to understand about their future and current situation past 10 years please explain sir thank you may we know what is the alternative for all this economic uh, uh, unemployment uh, price rise like that what can be the alternative please
I have a question on the EVMs. To what extent should we be anxious and factor in any manipulation of the EVMs? That is my question. Sir, what would be the biggest challenges for the coming incoming government if BJP is not elected? Sir, actually, initially you mentioned about the bureaucrats who are uh, communalized, but these bureaucrats who are now handling all the administration of this country have read the constitution, its secular features and all the other fundamentals of the constitution which was written by Ambedkar. But what is the impact of this Modi government and RSS on this bureaucratic machinery? Because in few years, this Modi government also can be overthrown. What is the impact of this Modi government and RSS over this bureaucracy, which will uh, administrate these countries for the future, near, near 20 or 30 years? This setup is going to rule the country. Shall I? One note of caution to everybody. Just because myself, Vijaya Ma'am, N. Ram, and Panir Selvam, we are sitting here, don't assume that we know everything. <laughs> we just happen to sit here, that's all. We don't know much. And number one is PM cares. We don't know. <laughs> we have no idea. Only thing we know is that, you know, when it was floated, it was floated as we got the impression that is a government kind of a thing because the prime minister's thing and we confirmed that in our mind because all the government employees were asked to donate one day of their salary to this PM case so a lot of money had gone and then of course a lot of firms and individuals everybody had uh, donated but now they say nothing to do with the government And you, you can't even ask questions about it. It doesn't come under RTI. It doesn't come under RTI. So nobody knows, like we did not know about the electoral bonds, till the court had said, because I mean, whatever the Prime Minister might say to, you know, ANI or before that Tandi TV, whatever he might say, because much before ANI, he, he said something to Tandi TV, isn't it? He said two things, which uh, Andram also had referred. I, I would like to share a few thoughts on that. You know, he said, people who are opposed to electoral bonds will come to regret it soon. That's what he said. Normally, somebody like us, we are used to political leaders saying, whenever court said something, the first reaction of any political leader, political party, MP, prime minister, minister, anybody would say, we respect the court. But did, did you hear that? Did you hear that from this prime minister or anybody in the government? No. Not even for the sake of formality. We know most of them don't mean. But say something. Say that, you know, okay, well, the court has said and we will comply. They have not said that. One. The other thing is that made me ask the following questions. When the Prime Minister said that 
those who oppose the electoral bonds will soon come to regret it does that include does that include the supreme court will the supreme court come to regret it will the five judges sitting on that bench do they come to regret it ram do the chief justice of india does he come to regret it what is he trying to say what is the prime minister trying to say suddenly there will be an epiphany you know people suddenly realize when sitting in the morning under a tree ah you know such wonderful skip unnecessarily we have misunderstood this will they will they will they come to some kind of a sudden conclusion like that and they'll say oh my god unnecessarily we did this you know i feel regret that i shouldn't have you know suspected the electoral bonds such a wonderful scheme will will they come to realize that kind of a thing or is it a threat before casting your vote please ask this question to yourself i will tell you what my conclusion is what my inference is it is a threat nothing less pm cares also is like that so these propaganda padao they will do that they will do that because they want to win and mind you next year is 2025 100 anniversary of the rss it is a part of a project somebody asked me mr ram also had uh, referred to it what about emergency you know emergency was not a part of a project it was not an authoritarian majoritarian kind of a project and then emergency was declared it was a very transactional kind of a thing one individual or a quarter of individuals who thought you know we shouldn't go out of power and all that kind of a thing but this is something very different it is deep rooted it is well thought out well designed and you must give credit where it is due they never made it a secret did they hide anything they were quite open electoral bonds were not transparent but ideology was so they do this but i can tell you that people are slowly realizing you know i noticed i've been going around quite a lot i notice that there is a moody fatigue which has set in अरे बहुत हो गया बहुत बोलता है रोम्ब पेस रहा ये फूल पेसिंडेर का उन्नम पन्न दिल है ये पपार पेस रहा पेस रहा पेस रहा हाँ you know this talk i was i was trying to see india is the 
fastest growing economy in the world do you know it's the fifth biggest fifth largest economy in the world how did we become fifth largest economy we became fifth largest economy by overtaking uk uk is a developed country do you agree it is a developed country now when you overtake a developed country what have you become but you will become a developed country in 2047 <laughs> but you have already overtaken uk i i can't understand this if where where is the what is the logic you i overtake ram and ram and i tell uh, vijay shankar look i in 2047 you know i'll be bigger than uh, ram ha i have already overtaken him so this is fooling around so every time you know 27 32 47 what's all this nidit ha ah. trailer padam padam irukku munnadi so ma'am there is a problem there you know a lot of details are coming many more details will come after this government is defeated including pm cares and evms hopefully even in varanasi people say more votes were counted than they were polled <laughs> have you heard this yeah so there's a problem there but you know if there is a marginal kind of a thing then manipulation is possible but if the if the voting in favor of sacking these people or against these people is overwhelming no no evm can really do anything and that is why that is why i tell everywhere i go please don't sit at home that people are doing no because you see this is not a election where you can take a chance whatever we say it should be overwhelmingly said resoundingly said that is important so that even an evm also cannot really distort your verdict that should be the goal have i missed anything ha huh, there is one more one more asking me what is the alternative isn't it i already dealt with that not not bureaucracy but you know uh, uh, what has happened to the polity and you know uh, don't don't think that those people who are supporting this particular ideology regime they are all so you know passionately in favor of this regime or passionately in favor of this ideology don't think don't think there are there are the three categories of people as far as i understand one is people who who want hindu rashtra to be established in this country there are people like that nothing wrong nothing wrong means we don't agree with it but there are genuine uh, nobody has any place this is a hindu country there is somebody who is asking me look muslims have a country christians have a country buddhists have a country why can't hindus have a country people ask me like that 
their concern is genuine misguided all right but they work for it and they have been working for it there are people till yesterday you know have you, you must have seen uh, all those biggies who gone who, who went to that ram temple uh, pran pratishtha you th you think they are all communals no they are not once this government goes they all will be secular <laughs> they will start buying hindu <laughs> they are time servers actually they are the biggest threat to this country not you know those uh, uh, people who are working who will say indo rashtra should be there they are not a threat He, india has been living with them since when he more than that they have always been like that they have been there always that that stream was always present in indian political life they were all there in the constituent assembly also they were in the first cabinet also they were in congress party also they were everywhere but they were not allowed to dictate to come to a position of dictating to the country but these people because they are they sit in newspapers they sit in newsrooms they sit in televisions they sit in television studios they write books they are in the universities these people for their their transactional gains they are the ones who can really spoil and who did spoil and who are spoiling this is the second category which is the most dangerous the third of course like you know uh, my friend was saying about bureaucracy you know they 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 implement they will also go back to whatever the government says whatever the 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 ruling party says and the ruling ideology says so of the three the second is the most dangerous yeah see i i i that that that's what that's where i began don't assume that we know everything as i said you know the secularism also constitutional values should have a an army prepare those armies and you know and another thing just just last one one sentence i let me say is this those who work against our values the values that we talked about they toiled for decades now my friend is in a hurry what will happen now till now we didn't bother this election we have to win you know everybody as i said we our political parties our political leaders they have just become election fighting machines between one election and the other election they don't do anything no ideological work no political work it used to be 60s and 70s otherwise you see this kind of an ideology the the most auspicious time for this ideology to flourish was immediately after independence immediately after the partition you know when thousands and thousands of uh, Uh, dead bodies were going from this side of the border to that side of the border and from that side of the border to this side of the border that was the time when communal passions were at their peak but the leadership of this country in almost every political party they said nothing doing you know i have to tell you this we had constituent assembly meeting from i think december 46 uh, to uh, 49 november 49 3 years almost you know when they were meeting 
country was in a turmoil. Negotiations for partition, independence, you know, direct action, Jinnah, you know, all the kind of a thing. And then hundreds of people were displaced, killed, bloodshed. Gandhiji was going around here and there. And and most of the people who were in the constituent assembly were also in the government. They were discharging those responsibilities and coming and sitting in here and, and discussing and debating. Just imagine. And when in the civil society where they were living and working and walking on the streets and coming into the constituent assembly, they, have, they are seeing the communal atmosphere and they come inside for three years they deliberated and decided to give ourselves a secular constitution in spite of the kind of things that were happening in the civil society they came in and said that this country belongs to everybody Isn't it great? Today, we have Hindu Jinnas in power. We should not have them. Let us remember the values that so steadfastly were championed. And put into the constitution. It's a miracle to have that kind of a constitution during those times. Not now, not 10 years ago, not 15 years ago. Not when, it, see, it was not made when things were placid, things were happy, things were, you know, um, Hindu, Muslim, Bhai, Bhai. No. When people were at each other's throats, at that time, we decided to have this kind of a diversity. And when there were so many kingdoms in India, we decided to have a federation, a federal structure. Because natural tendency could have been to have a unitary structure, isn't it? That we have to control everybody. No. See, look at the look at the contradictions through which our people have waded and gave us this kind of a plural, secular, a, a document that is wedded to equality, federalism, respect to every religion, respect to every language, respect to every people, respect to every region. It's a miracle. Please don't let that noble work to be undone. 